The old Crown's Lands Act Queensland has now been converted to the Land Act 1940, 19, 1994 Queensland and this is where you can find the Brigalow Corporation today. In essence, now all of this work was done by a committee in New South Wales that is not our work, it's, they know we're using it and that's in these documents. Today, in essence, the Government of Queensland has moved all the Crown's land and all Crown land that was sold, fee simple, into the Brigalow Corporation. Well, who was the Governor out of Queensland before she became the Governor-General? Grandma. Grandma. And Grandma's got a pen. And she's got a big smile and she shows her little grandkids. But what, she's actually a United Nations delegate. Into the Brigalow through the Land Act, Land Title Act, Property Law Act. Now that, you can take that, it's essentially, it's not exclusively Sue Main, and Sue Main doesn't want to be led to believe that she's the only one in this committee. It's a committee. Farmers Land Ownership Rights in Australia. It's under Flora, Berkeley, Woodstock, etc. It's that committee that put this Flora News which deals exclusively with Fee Simple. This document, it's their document. And that is their email. It's on the DVD now. Pay 10 bucks and look after your rights. And you're free, beg your pardon? Oh yeah, you've got the whole shit and shebang. One day you'll even have Sue speaking to you. And she's a Christian too. Banking, well, isn't this an interesting one? Because Rudd said, come on, government, we'll guarantee all the bank deposits. Problem is they didn't tell you they didn't own the bank. Yes. Next one, mate. Commonwealth Constitution, now all banks sit under that. Section 51, the Parliament shall subject to this constitution, I love those words, subject to this constitution. I'll repeat those words, subject, because a couple would start to yawn subject to this constitution. Hallelujah. That means everything subject to the constitution, but who owns it? The elector with her majesty. That's the agreement. Anyone else in the middle is fiddling with it. The parliament shall subject to this constitution have power to make laws for the peace, order and good government of the commonwealth. Well, we're not getting that. We've actually got a coup. When everyone sat back in their lounge chairs wondering what the hell's on TV tonight. Over in Victoria when one guy's house was on fire at the back, they were still watching TV in the lounge room. Sorry about that. They were watching. They'd all been warned days before. And the only time they exited is when they realised the back of the house on fire. Because I just finished watching a movie. Section 51, subsection 4. Borrowing money on the public credit of the Commonwealth. Did you hear? I'll repeat that. Hillary and Jill. Borrowing money on the public credit of the Commonwealth. Hey, the pommy shell is going to sleep. We better bring them up the front. <laughs> borrowing money on the public credit of the Commonwealth. Do you understand what that means? That means the Commonwealth Government does not create your credit. They borrow it. Who should have the right to create the credit? The Parliament of the Commonwealth should have the right to create the credit. And this is a parliamentary report in Tasmania in 1934 called Parliament of Tasmania Monetary System Report of Select Committee with minutes of proceedings that said the church has got to get involved with this money problem. Hallelujah. Or oh, we're going to lose our country. And that was done in 1935. Because it's a parliamentary report, it can go into every legal document we got. And that's why we copied a few. We can only bring a few because you go over excess luggage when you start to carry this stuff. We're not the Illuminati. We've got to carry it on a bag on a plane. They put it on freight that they own in their own planes. Huge difference. 
and then the other section, currency, coinage and legal tender. That's only the trick. The real trick's in that credit. Did you get slam dunk for $43 billion of more credit? What did Senator Turnbull say? You're going to max out your credit card. What do you mean by that? You won't be able to pay the bill. And who voted on it? 11 senators from Western Australia. How come you haven't got 12 senators? Hey, hello? Where's the 12th senator of Western Australia? And they're just going to give you one. Shouldn't you have an election on that? Well, be very careful of that, because when we looked at the list to send them out, we could only find 11. And I said to the guys, where the hell's the 12th one? Where is the 12th one? Well, did I just give you a dummy? Is that who you elected? You better watch what they're doing with your law. Next one, banking, other than state banking. Also, state banking extending beyond the limits of the state concern. The incorporation of banks. There it is. And the issue of paper money. Foreign corporations. Who owns your banks? Foreign corporations. So the very guys that... Rudd says we will guarantee all the bank deposits. They've got to go overseas to get the bank to give them the money to guarantee the money. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. How can you guarantee diddly squat? Yeah. All that's doing is stopping a run on the bank until the bank says the door's shut, Cobber. Foreign corporations and trading or financial corporations formed within the limits of the Commonwealth. Next one. Commonwealth Bank was sold in 1991. Anybody agree to that sale? No, it wasn't sold. No, it's a legal argument. I'm actually only saying that it was sold in 1991, possibly needed a referendum because it's attached to Section 51, and at that point it was a statutory bank. All that is is articles of the Commonwealth Bank extracted from ATSIC. That's page 3. Cole signs off. I, I can't even determine how many amounts of money that is, but, or shares, but in this section, and we've currently got um, chartered accountants looking at these documents, it says signature of witness. You're the jury. You're the jury. You're the jury. You're the jury. Ask ATSIC to give you a copy of them. Write to them and get it. And it was done the 16th of April, 1991. We've got the articles. You get them too. Write to Atsik and say, give it to us and give it to us now. Next one, Darren. Bank shares. Now, who, holds, who owns these banks? No, no, just relax, Mary. We'll give it a go on the slide. Don't kick it into overdrive here. We're going real gentle here. There's your Commonwealth Bank, the first 10 shareholders. Chase Manhattan, National Bank, Westpac, Citicor, AMP, Commonwealth Custodial Services, Queensland Investment, ANZ, Perpetual, they all own each other. Yeah. But look at number one, the Yankee Bank. We all know what's happened in Yankee Land. Yeah. What's the next one? ANZ, same boys. Yeah. What's the next one? Westpac, same boys. Yeah. What's the next one? Same, boys? Yes. You getting the drift? Yep. Sad, isn't it? Because we're supposed to be looking after the kids. Is it too late? No. It is too late if God doesn't intervene. It do if God does not intervene, it is too late. Fractional Reserve Banking, that's how they do it. That's the name of their fraud. It's called fractional reserve banking. Understand that and get to know it. That's a book called The Most Secret Science by Roberts, and you'll probably find him on the internet. Direct the Committee to Restore the Constitution Incorporated. That's the United States book. But you have excellent material in that book. This is what Senator Medcalf said in relation to something on a, that's in that book. It says this. The crucial question is, where was that $1 billion just before they touched the computer and put it into the checking account? The answer 
It didn't exist. Now, Ron's a farmer. He knows to put a whole heap of wheat in that silo, he's got to do something. He doesn't just walk up to the silo and say, praise the Lord and open it up and he's got a thousand tonne of wheat. 